This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research, however no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Chi Klein. Today is August 5th, 2010 at 2 p.m. This is an interview with Chi Tran Klein in Bradenton. She was born January 15th, 1970 in Vietnam. My next memory of on the way over would be when we were at the, um, in Guam at the camps in Guam, and then there were, there were structures, shelters up there that looked like little cabins. And we were there for enough time that we had settled in, so I don't know what the time frame was. It may have been months, it may have, you know, been weeks. Um, but it was a happy time, you know. It was almost like a vacation, <laughs> you know. And uh, we were so young that my sisters and I would my sister and I and our cousins would play and just find little things and um, some of the grown-ups were really good at entertaining us and making us feel comfortable and happy. Um, I remember these jars that they would catch the fireflies and you know, of course that was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I had mentioned this before, but uh, with the mimosa plants, we call them the tickle plants because you touch them and their leaves would just fold. And, and of course, in Florida, we do have them around. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any. I'd love to buy some for my son uh, and then tell him the story. Yeah. And then uh, the next, <clears throat> we met some really, really nice refugees there as well. Um, and the, there was one, and of course, in Vietnam, you call older adult or just adults, um, uncle and aunts, whether or not they are uh, familial, mm -hmm. you know, um, just as out of deference um, and out of respect. And so there was this one man who we called uncle, Tuan, uncle Tuan, and he would make these little flowers for us out of the silver lining of his cigarette oh. <laughs> box or you know the, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's so funny too to think okay so here's something that's bad yeah. <laughs> that you learn later on, so don't smoke <laughs> but at the same time you know there was something there there was something beautiful that he had made mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the inside of that lining um, and it, it's it's interesting too because I always thought of that as a rose, like in my mind's memory, I thought of it as a rose. He had made us a little rose. But years later, when we met him in the United States, he mm. made the same, I, I asked him to make That's it again something. because it was such a happy memory for us. Mm -hmm. And it was actually six petals, more of a daisy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But in my memory, you know, I had called it a rose as a child. And so in my memory, I thought of it as a rose. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, this is what it was. <laughs> so, and that was, it was kind of neat too. Um, and now that I'm old enough, now that I'm 40 and looking back on my life and trying to put all of these little threads and tr tying them together and trying to make sense of it all, it's just really neat to have lived this long, mm -hmm. to have seen yeah. you know, from childhood on. Um, and so that was a happy and um, from Guam, we came over to Connecticut. Everyone was separated. All the refugees were separated. And we went to, uh, my mom and my sister and I went to Connecticut, New Haven, Connecticut. We had been sponsored over by a very nice, wonderful um, Catholic woman. Um, she was Filipino. We called her Batita. And she had, you know, gotten us some little toys and hand-me-down toys. And we were in this room, and, you know, it was either a bedroom or a basement, I'm not sure. Um, and there was a little black and white TV there. And I love this story because, again, it's when you don't understand or when you don't know or when you don't have any ref any kind of context within what to frame what you, you see. Um, and on the black and white TV, there was uh, Bewitched, the old Bewitched, the, and the, they still had, they had commercials, and they had the commercial of the scrubbing bubbles. 
you know, the scrubbing holes. Uh, and I had no idea what those scrubbing bubbles were. You know, I kept thinking, Mom, what are those? You know, and it, it was like that one enigma that just bothered you because everything else made sense to me, and I had to know. And my mom, of course, didn't know because she didn't understand English. <laughs> <laughs> and so she said, well, they look like, you know, um, octopus. Yeah, they look like an octopus. Are they an octopus? She's like, well, I don't know. And I'm sure at some point she probably got sick of my questions <laughs> and just said, okay, just think of it as an octopus, you know? <laughs> so that, that's kind of a, a funny little thing. Um, and then uh, we, at some point, we flew over to California to be with the rest of my paternal family to join up, to meet up with my grandmother and my uncles and aunts uh, in Monterey. So it was a really happy homecoming. Um, and we met up with my cousins again. And so that was that was really neat. Um, and, and, and from there, we went... Actually, I think we, we stayed in Monterey for quite a while because I, I, I remember going to school in Monterey. Um, and I remember in terms of kindergarten, and this is kind of funny just from a child's perspective too, being in a classroom and then having all of these little faces coming at me. But it was really scary because they didn't look anything. The children didn't look like anyone I was familiar with. Because even Batita, she was Filipino, so of course mm. she, she resembled my grandparents, my, you know. And so that was an interesting thing. And just in terms of not knowing the language, these happy, sweet little faces, but they were all coming towards me. And I'm sure the teacher, just as I, since I'm a teacher, <laughs> would have done, make sure you welcome right. <laughs> you know, little Chi to class. <laughs> and, and yet it, it was a scary moment for me because I didn't know what was happening. And you have all these people coming at you. Um, and then I just, I, I remember just having toys available to play and having all these experiences. But again, you don't understand what's going on. And so that was really, really difficult, you know. And um, but it wasn't unhappy; it was just difficult. <laughs> uh, and then when we, I went to first grade, I remember starting to learn to read and getting unset. I still have the report cards. <laughs> I mean, you guys know me, so <laughs> you imagine I had unsatisfactories oh, yeah. on my report card um, for reading, um, but it wasn't anything having to do with it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know, and my mom didn't know, so she would teach me the alphabet, but the sounds were different, and she herself was learning English, so everything was a struggle at that point. I actually did not learn how to read really well until second grade, you know, so I don't push my son, you know, I, I try to encourage him the way, with whatever he's interested in, we encourage him, and help him and challenge him in those areas. But, you know, I didn't learn until I was in the second grade. So I'll <laughs> You're be okay. Fine. And I'm fine now. <laughs> Although I, I have to say that writing for me is still difficult. Uh, even though I've been told that I, I'm a, a good writer, it's still because I struggle over and I, and I, I correct as I go, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm sure that came from when I was little, mm -hmm. trying to struggle and learn. Uh, and I'm probably one of the few children who, on the report card, had as a recommendation, <laughs> watch Sesame Street on TV. <laughs> I'm sure that's one of the few <laughs> recommendations to actually watch TV. <laughs> uh, so uh, I watched a lot of Sesame Street <laughs> as a little kid. Uh, 